So you're new to Wizard 101 and you don't know where to start. Wait, what are you doing? You're, you're already quitting? No, 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 stop. Don't do that. Why are you thinking about quitting? No, stop. I'm going to help you out. Don't worry. I got you. I'm going to give you five tips on how to be a better Wizard 101 player. Number five, your order is ready. Number five. And number five, I think all newer players should start with Fire, Myth, or Storm. The reason why I suggest these three schools are because they get an early AoE, Blade, good damage, and they can also solo pretty easily. I could see someone make an argument for Death since it is the best soloing school. However, they don't get their AoE until level 48, so a newer player can get deterred by that. It's still one of the most fun schools to play and a great option to pick. For life, they also don't get their AoE until level 48, so I'd recommend holding off on that. For ice, they have low damage and on top of that they don't get their blade until level 38, so that can make low level a huge struggle. For balance, although they get their AoE the earliest out of any school, it's one of the lowest in damage. And on top of that, they get a 25% blade instead of a 35% blade that the other schools get. On to number four. Table for four. Number four. And number four, I would suggest to never skip a chest or reagent. They're going to make your life so much easier later in the game. On to number three. Yes, I need a three finger combo, please. Number three. Number three, you need to start working on your pets. The amount of times I've seen a level 40 with the starter pet from Old Town is insane and it needs to stop. The sooner you start with pets, the better it will be and the sooner you're going to get that perfect pet that you've always wanted. One of the better ways to get into pet hatching is actually to try pet copying. What you want to do is head into this shop right here, the Pet Shop Boys. Go to the one on the left. And then buy a generation one blood bat. From there you want to train that one to adult. And then go over to the kiosk. Or if one of your friends has a generation one max stat blood bat. You want to hatch with that one to save some gold. Go over here. Look at the blood bat. Cut the list in half to make it easier. And then go all the way to the right. Until you start seeing the generation one badge pop up. Once you start to see that, look to make sure it has max stats. If it has a selfish talent, subtract the numbers. It should be 255, 250, 260, 260, 250. What you want to do is you want to hatch your blood bat with that one. And if any of these numbers transfer to this one, you want to keep it. Now, Farrick actually has a more in-depth and better guide on this. So I'd recommend going to there. But... I'll give you the gist of it. What you want to do is you want to get your max stat blood bat, and once you have it, you don't need to make any more. From there, you go to whatever pet you want in the kiosk, or if your friend has a pet that you want, and then you want to hatch with that one. And you want to take a screenshot of it to make sure that you keep that same exact pet, because you have to hatch with that exact pet to copy that exact talent pool. The reason why I recommend this is because it's a much more sure way of getting the exact pet that you want, and it's also much cheaper. It may seem very intimidating for newer players to get into a system like this, but I guarantee you this is the easiest way to get the exact pet that you want. And once you have the pet that you want, you're going to feel so much better about all the hard work that you put into it. Anyways, on to number two. I would like to make a two-go order, please. Number two. And number two, stop collecting all the side quests that you see. There are only a few side quests that are actually worth it in the game. And that would be all the Z quests, because this man is magical and he gives you a training point every single time you complete one. And I would say that it is worth it if you're close to a level up, so that you can either get the level and train your pet or say you're close to a milestone instead of doing the main story you can do a side quest which are generally easier except for the book quests any librarian will try and give you a book quest and those are the worst side quests that you can do 
They don't give you anything for it, and they're super annoying. So at number two, stop collecting all side quests. On to the most important one, number one. Yes, I will be the only one eating. Number one. At number one, I had the most important thing to do as soon as possible, and that's gardening. Gardening is one of the most helpful things that you can do, but it's also really time consuming. So at level 12, Wu's going to send you to Farley. He's going to tell you about plants, give you your own. You need to plant that plant and let it grow, tend to it, give it its needs. Hopefully plant even more so you get more XP quicker because you want to get to rank 3, but preferably rank 5. Once you are ranked 3 in gardening, I want you to come over here to Saversad Pass and Grizzleheim to the boar camp and start fighting the split hoof barbarians. These guys drop couch potatoes and also some equipment that's not worth much gold, but at least it's worth something. It's a little added bonus on top of your normal couch potato farming. Now, if these guys aren't dropping it for you and you want to kind of change up your luck, over here, there's the troubled warriors. They also drop couch potatoes. You can farm for them there and see if that works a little bit better for you, but definitely come and farm for couch potatoes. Once you have your couch potatoes, I want you to go to the crown shop, housing, red barn farm, and then buy this with gold. It's going to be well worth it. Your couch potatoes are going to grow faster, and you're also going to have a house with a world gate. From there, you want to go to the description. I'm going to link a video by Farrick that's going to tell you how to do a 69 plot, and this is going to be perfect to plant all of your couch potatoes, and it fits in the circle. This is the best way to garden as many of them as you can and you're going to get a ton of mega snacks, a ton of gold and in powers, which are very useful in the game. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, go ahead and leave a like so more people like you can find this. Subscribe for more content. And if you're a veteran wizard, leave some tips in the comments below to help everyone out. Thank you.